Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information related to psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. In Mind Brain Talks, I describe and discuss different themes related to psychology and neurosciences and try to describe it the best as I can for you to understand and to learn something about it. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today I will talk about the concept of emotion regulation. This concept is a very important concept in psychotherapy and psychology because it's the concept that postulates how humans or how individuals are able to regulate or modulate their emotions. Emotion regulation its a human ability and it's very important in everyday life. But let's see how it could be defined. Also, this video it will be framed in the category of theories and concepts. So, let's see what is emotion regulation. Emotion regulation is the ability to respond to the ongoing demands of experience with a wide range of emotions. It's the ability to respond to the ongoing demands in a way that is socially acceptable or tolerable. This is a very complex process that involves initiating, inhibiting and modulating one's states or behavior in a given situation. For example, subjective experience of anger in a discussion or subjective um, sadness in a loss. Thus, emotional regulation is a highly significant uh, ability in daily human life. And, generally speaking, there is emotion dysregulation that is defined as the difficulties in controlling or the difficulties in emotional regulation. Emotion dysregulation may be seen as the lack of ability to regulate or to modulate emotions. This lack of this ability is highly correlated or highly associated with psychopathological symptoms such as anxiety, depression or interpersonal reactivity. There are lots of psychologists that look to emotional regulation from a different lens. However, Gross is a preeminent author and it's the, uh, one of the greatest theories based on emotional regulation. He has a theory on the process model. The process model of emotional regulation is based upon a model of emotion. The process model of emotion regulation suggests that emotion generation processes occur in a particular sequence over time. The situation that triggers an emotion. Individuals pay attention to uh, the emotion and there is an appraisal based on this attention. Then there is an emotional response that is generated by giving rise to different sensory modalities such as experiential, behavior or physiological systems. Because of an emotional response it depends on different individuals, this model involves a feedback loop from situation to emotion generation. From this conceptualization, this process model has five different uh, modalities in emotion regulation that respond to particular situations. They occur in the following order. 1. Situation selection. 2. Situation modification. 3. Attentional deployment. 4. Cognitive change. and 5. Response modulation. Also, this model divides the emotion regulation strategies into two broad categories antecedent focused and response focused. Antecedent focused strategies such as situation selection, situation modification, attentional deployment, and cognitive change occur before an emotional response is fully generated. Response focused strategies such as response modulation occur after an emotional response is fully generated. So, as you may see, we may have some emotion regulation strategies that we may use before the emotion is triggered or we may use another kind of uh, emotion regulation strategies that may be activated or we may use when the emotion is fully generated. Emotion regulation strategies may also be divided into other broad categories. One category is situation selection and situation modification. 
Another category is attentional deployment. In attentional deployment, we may find strategies such as distraction, rumination, worry or thought suppression. Another broad emotion regulation strategy is cognitive change. Here we may find strategies such as reappraisal, distancing and humor. Another broad category may be response modulation. Here we may find strategies such as expressive suppression, drug abuse, exercise or sleep. As you may see, there are lots of strategies that humans use to cope with emotion. However, there are lots of other strategies that were not listed here. In the future, I will look to them and describe the best as I can. Emotion regulation may also be seen as a developmental process. Emotion regulation efforts during infancy are believed to be guided primarily by innate physiological response systems. These systems usually manifest as an approach or avoidance of pleasant or unpleasant stimuli. Between 3 and 6 months, basic motor functioning and attentional mechanisms begin to play a role in emotion regulation, allowing infants to be more effectively approach or avoid emotional relevant stimuli. Infants may also engage in self-distraction and help-seeking behaviors for regulatory purposes. Later, the emotional regulation strategies employed by the caregivers may also be passed or also be learned by infant. The type of attachment style between caregiver and infant can therefore play a meaningful role in the regulatory strategies that infants may learn to use. By the end of the first year, toddlers begin to adopt new strategies to decrease negative stimuli. Strategies may be such as chewing an object or moving away from something that had upset them. At two years, toddlers can apply certain emotion regulation tactics to influence various emotional states. Emotional regulation knowledge becomes more substantial during childhood. For example, children aged 6 to 10 begin to understand display rules. They come to appreciate the context within certain emotional expressions that are socially accepted or not. For example, children may understand that upon receiving a gift they should display a smile instead of start to cry. During childhood, there is also a trend towards to use more cognitive emotion regulation strategies such as taking the place of distraction, approach and avoidance tactics. Also, regarding the development of emotion dysregulation in children, one finding suggests that children who are frequently exposed to negative emotion at home will be more likely to display and have more difficulties regulating high levels of negative emotion. In adolescence, individuals show a marked increase in their abilities to regulate their emotions. Emotion regulation becomes more complex depending on diverse and multiple factors. Additionally, teenagers have an spontaneous increase of cognitive emotion regulations because of the brain maturation. Finally, in adulthood, as people get older, they're motivational to seek emotional meaning in life through social tides tends to increase. Autonomic responses decreases and emotion regulation skills tend to increase. It is important to know that emotion regulation is an ability that is developed through time and many of the strategies that we use to regulate our emotions are learned in social interactions. In this sense, emotion regulation is a process that combines learned behaviors with uh, brain development. Functional magnetic resonance imaging has allowed for the study of emotion regulation on a biological level. Especially, research over the last decade strongly suggests that there is a neural basis for emotion regulation. Research findings report that there is a correlation between emotion regulation and particular patterns of prefrontal activation. These regions include the orbital prefrontal cortex, the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Two additional brain structures that have been found to contribute to emotion regulation are the amygdala and the anterior cingulate cortex. An implication of these findings is that individual differences in prefrontal cortex activation may predict the ability to perform different tasks in respect to emotion regulation. Finally, now I will talk a little bit about emotion dysregulation, which is a very pervasive issue in psychopathology. 
There are lots of people who have psychiatric conditions that also suffer from emotion dysregulation. Individuals who suffer from emotion dysregulation tend to have a rise in psychological and uh, emotional dysfunctions caused by traumatic experiences due to inability to regulate emotions. These traumatic experiences typically may happen in the grade school and are sometimes associated with bullying or victimization. Toxic early experiences tend to be correlated with uh, emotion dysregulation or emotion regulational difficulties. Therefore, individuals who suffer from uh, dysfunctional aspects during uh, childhood and adolescence may be um, more vulnerable to, this, to have uh, psychological symptoms or psychiatric conditions. Emotion regulation is all very important in psychotherapy because lots of schools of psychotherapy have different strategies to deal with emotion dysregulation. Approaches such as cognitive behavior therapy, dialectical behavior therapy, mindfulness based therapy or even emotion focused therapy have different ways uh, to regulate emotions. So now let's just summarize the contents of today. Emotion regulation is an ability to modulate or to regulate emotions. One prominent author that is Gross had developed a process model. This model has five stages such as situation selection, situation modification, attentional deployment, cognitive change and response modulation. We also saw that there is different categories uh, and different kinds of emotion regulation strategies such as situation selection, attentional deployment, distraction and is also a developmental process. Emotion regulation has a neurological basis which uh, represents the maturation of the frontal cortex. We saw that Emotion regulation is very important in psychotherapy and emotion dysregulation tend to be associated or correlated with uh, psychiatric or uh, psychological conditions. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to check the video description to see the references list regarding the today's team. Before we go, I would like to know what you think about all of this. Use the comment sections below to express your thoughts and to express your mind. Also, if you find this content useful, leave a like and please consider to subscribe, hitting the bell for notifications. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!